Are you going to cut it that way? No, I'm going <laughs> to cut it many ways. Oh, I'm going to really? cut it this way first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See if I can intersect the valve. In this episode, we're talking everything 1KZ TE cylinder heads. Now, these are a pretty simple cylinder head. It is a single cam, and there is two valves per cylinder, and that's as basic as it gets. All right, so I've made three cuts in this cylinder head. One to show off what's happening on the exhaust runners, one to show off what's happening on the intake runners, and one to show off what's happening between the valves. So let's just dive into some close-ups of this, uh, and I'll explain to you what's going on and how everything's interacting with each other. So first I'll show you the intake runner. So this is where air comes in, meets the back of the valve. The valve will open, let air into the engine, ready for combustion. Now here are some water galleries, here and here, and above is where the oil would live, which lubricates the cam and things inside that part of the cylinder head. So nothing too mind bending going on here. We'll go into more detail about how the valve works, uh, the valve guides, the valve seats, and the valve seals. So we've got a valve seat, which is stainless steel, and that's what the valve seals against. And then we've got a valve guide, which is brass, and that's got a seal on the top to stop any oil from getting into the combustion chamber. So with this cross section, we can see the air is coming in through this intake runner. There's normally a spring that lives here and that will permanently pull the spring closed unless the cam pushes it down. So these are constantly moving up and down through this brass valve guide like so. Uh, and that's how air is gonna get into your engine. So here we have the exhaust runners uh, and the exhaust valve lives in this area. Now what's interesting is we've also got a cross section of the injector, uh, the pre-combustion chamber and some more coolant galleries. So I'll show you close-ups of this piece here specifically because there's a lot of action going on in here with the injector and the glow plug and we can just see how all of these interconnect. So this is the underneath of the head this is where the combustion occurs in this area. That's why we've got an intake and an exhaust valve. Now the valve seat is a different metal, it's stronger, uh, and it's machined to suit the valves. That way you get a nice airtight seal during combustion. This here is a pre-combustion chamber. That's also a thing you will see in diesels, and it is a different material, it's not aluminium, and that makes actually machining this surface very difficult. Now this pre-combustion chamber up in that hole is where the glow plug lives, which I will show you. This is where the glow plug and injector come in. So there's a piece over here, which will show that better. So we can see this is where the glow plug would live. This is where the injector would live. And they both meet in this pre-combustion chamber, which is that piece. All right, with this piece of the pre-combustion chamber out of the way, we can see a lot better the injector hole and the glow plug hole. 
that's why they penetrate through into the combustion area. Now these pre-combustion chambers can crack. Not the end of the world because you don't lose compression or anything really. Uh, you're not leaking oil or water into the cylinder head, but it is a sign of wear. Now these cylinder heads are prone to cracking, it's no secret, but that is coupled with overheating. Now, these cars can overheat if you push them, uh, and I find that people do push these cars because they're a workhorse, they're, they're apparently unbreakable, that's a lie, but they are very, very well built, strong, reliable cars. The issue is when you start towing caravans up hills and you've got, you know, you've got big tires on, you've done all this stuff and the car is way heavier and it's towing a lot uh, and it might be a hot day and you're towing it uphill and that's when your engine temps start to creep up. And if you haven't done any modifications to monitor those temperatures, like your exhaust gas temperatures or EGTs, uh, and you're not monitoring your water temperatures exactly, like it's all good to have hot and cold, but uh, you want an accurate gauge that's actually gonna give you a degree amount readout. Uh, and if you're not keeping an eye on those things and your car overheats, you're gonna crack your head basically. Any car will crack ahead if it overheats for long enough. So the issue here is we've got a section that I've cut through where the cylinder head cracks most. And that crack occurs between the valves. So you can see here, I'll show you on this piece. We've got our two valves and there's a little piece of cylinder head right here and that's where they normally crack between here or here uh, and sometimes outwards towards these water galleries now why does that happen it's just not strong enough there's not enough material there so we've got this cross section here and so I've I've cut this way as well and so where this crack normally occurs between this valve and this valve is right here and that's where you're gonna find a water gallery so water is traveling through here to keep everything cool but as you can see there's not a whole lot of material left to keep this thing held together and that's why they crack right here now I'm just moving on to the new cylinder head because this one's actually got shims buckets and springs installed which I can show you how they work now, this is our bucket and it has a shim on top and you can see we can get a screwdriver in here, flick them out and change them for different shims, depending on the clearance that we need. Now you need a specific tool to take these springs out because you gotta take the pressure off the spring to get the circlip out and then pull it out. So I'm not gonna disassemble that, but I will show you a close up. So this here is the top of our spring with a little circlip and a cap and then there's a spring underneath, which is actually a bit hard to see. But you can see this groove on the valve here. That's where the circlip goes. The spring lives here. And that's just how they work. And now that this video is coming to an end, uh, what am I gonna do with this hacked up cylinder head? Well, basically I'm gonna take everything out of it that isn't aluminium, and then I'm gonna take it camping with me. Uh, and it is Easter tradition for me and my mates to throw beer cans, aluminium hot plates that we don't want anymore, uh, or cylinder heads in this example that we don't want anymore. We throw them on the fire, we have a big roaring fire, party it up, and then in the morning we pull out a big lump of aluminium intertwined with charcoal. Oh, oh. Wow. oh that's Holy it, shit. that's fucking Go me. Now's the chance. Stop, 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 stop. 10 seconds Did it. smell. 10 seconds smell. Did it. Oh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, buckle. One. Oh! 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 Ten oh! seconds oh! smell! Oh! You owe me ten seconds smell! <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at so much. Fill it with Yep! One, That's a good song. Two, two three, four. Oh! Four, oh. 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 <laughs> four <laughs> seconds, <laughs> man! So these are the results from the last annual smelt where we melted a 
aluminium hot plate that we got off a barbecue in hard rubbish or something. It was just scrap. If that's only a hot plate's worth, I'm pretty keen to see what a whole cylinder head's worth looks like. That's the angle you want. That's hell's anus. <laughs> now, if you'd like to see the Hilux, uh, I'm going to do a bit of a walk around when I go camping and when I smelt this head. So, subscribe. You'll see that video when it comes out. I'll give you a walk around of the car. I have given it a birthday since I've gotten it running. And yeah, as I said, Easter's coming up and I'm going to melt the cylinder head down on the campfire. Uh, and you can stay tuned to see how that turns out. Alright guys, thanks for watching, uh, we'll see you on the next video, and keep your eyes peeled for the Hilux walk around and the annual Easter smell.